so I work in evolutionary genetics and sometimes if you tell this to people they think oh you know that's just the past and what's that got to do with anything and it turns out we can actually use evolution to understand a lot about how genes work and what they're supposed to do and what parts of the genes are doing the job um, and so uh, there's a great analogy for this and this is a little story from World War II when there was this statistician called Abraham Wald who was called in and they asked him to help the Air Force. And what they asked him to do is that they asked him to look at the planes returning from battle and to look at where the bullet holes were on these planes and to look for the d distribution of these. So he's a statistician, so he'd be looking for clusters of these bullet holes. And this is where they wanted to reinforce the plane because they didn't want to put metal, thicker metal all over the plane because they didn't have enough metal and because if you make your plane too heavy, it doesn't fly anymore. So he said, OK, I'll take the job, but you know, you've got it completely backwards because presumably the bullets that are going up in the air are hitting randomly. And those planes that are returning from battle are the ones that managed to fly even with the bullet holes. So they've got bullet holes in these places and they managed to fly anyway. So what I'm going to look for instead is I'm going to look for the patches on the plane that I never see a bullet hole in because that's where if the plane gets hit, it crashes. And this is actually the same kind of thing that we do with evolution. We look at genes and we look at a gene in human and we look at the same gene in mouse and in chicken and in fish and in everywhere we can find it. And we look to see where has it changed and where has it stayed the same. And when we find these bits, if we're lucky and we find some part of the gene has not changed in any of these really different animals, we know it's not because the bullet never hit in that part of the gene, it's because it can't fly without it. Whatever this job, whatever job this gene has to do, it won't work if you change this bit of the gene. So this is what we do in evolution. And then it means just by looking at genes, by comparing them across lots of different animals, and by doing this in a computer, we can understand something very big and something important, which is what part of this gene is really, really important for making it do its job correctly.